Hey YouTube, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel. This is an area you don't ever normally get to see me in, but this is like my four tiered bookshelf that goes all the way to the ceiling and all the way to the floor. Um, and I'm 5'4 for reference. Hopefully everyone is doing well. I just wanted to do a quick, very quick, like what I'm currently reading and then just a little mini book haul because I got a lot of goodies, which one of them I'm already reading um, from a thrift store and I got all 10, 10 or 11 books for $30. So that's a mega score for me. First, we're gonna jump into what I am reading currently. JK, first thing I wanted to talk about was, I know I had started this bullet journal at the beginning of the year. I have like some videos up and stuff about it. You know, I had originally started out doing really good, um, but along the way, uh, I stopped kind of using everything that I had in here. And instead I wrote like, this is now officially moving to my book review and reading log journal. So like all I've done, you know, consistently <laughs> now for months is just like go over the books that I'm reading, just like quick reviews about them. So I am still, this is, this is the page I'm at now for um, May and then here's June's that I've started, but I'm just using my bullet journal now for like book recording, book tracking, book reviews, my own little book journal basically. So I know I had never given an update about this. I had never posted another bullet journal video. That's what happened with my bullet journal. It is now a book tracker journal. Yes. One of the books that I have yet to start but is going to be a quick read is the Hilda and the Great Parade. I talked about this quite a bit in my um, everything I've read for the first half of the year. So I'm starting on book two in the novel. It's basically the same as the series on Netflix if you've seen it or not. Um, highly recommend my favorite animated series, but just a quick read, only like a hundred and something pages. So this one will be easy. The next one I'm currently reading is The Wind in the Willows. Um, this was part of the bookstore thrift haul. And I have these little tabs um, that I use that like hold my space on the pages. I picked this up because of Emmy. And if I remember, I'll link her channel down below, but she did like this readathon and she read this in there and they kind of reviewed it and talked about it. And I saw it in the kids section and I was like, sure, easy pickup. So reading this one as well. This one I feel like is gonna be more of like a long-term kind of read. The next one I am actively reading is The Enneagram of Belonging, um, A Compassionate Journey of Self-Acceptance. I said this in my everything I've read for this year so far, but I've just really been going through some stuff and I'm still very much going through it. Um, and I've just had to learn a lot and my mind was blown. I listened to like, a two-hour podcast last night about the fawn fear response which everything was so accurate and it explained so much and it kind of caught me off guard a bit because I've done so many years of like healing and trying to process and work through my trauma that's like I remember having heard this at one point from one of my therapists but I never deep dived into it and then it came back around because of something that just happened yesterday in my life that was really dramatic um, so I'm just trying to understand myself better. So I am a fan of Zodiac and I guess like, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Astrology and all of that stuff. I find it rather fascinating. Um, again, always on the edge kind of about what I believe, but I picked this up, again, at the thrift store as part of the bundle of basically most of these books, especially the ones that I will show you in the book haul. Um, so I'm reading this one as well. But I'm not that far into it again. I put little bookmarks. But I knew my Enneagram, I guess, at one point, forgot it. Retook a test, which this book actually says tests may not be accurate, so we'll see. Like I said, I'm really not that far into it. But I so far believe I'm an Enneagram 9. Um, so we'll see. I just want to find other ways to connect with myself. 
Um, if anyone's aware of like the fawn trauma response, um, so much of it is about dissociation and disconnect from yourself. So that's like clearly is meant to be my main focus, my main journey for this entire year. So I am really into all of these. And speaking of this, my next book is also helpful for that. The next one is The Body Keeps the Score. Um, I mentioned this as well. I believe in the everything I've read so far for the year. I'm a little bit further through here, but not a ton. It's a really heavy read. It's a lot of science. It's just a lot of like information to digest, but I'm loving it so far. It's helped me be able to, I guess, connect things better so far. Like I know this is this, I know this is this, I know why I respond this way, I know why I do this specific thing, why I feel this way type situations. But bringing it back to the body and like how they all connect and how they all play a factor in your trauma is just incredible to read about. So once again, I highly, highly recommend this at least to understand, you know, why certain things are the way they are, I think. I am on chapter seven now, I think, I think, yes, I think I'm on chapter seven now. So highly recommend, excited to finish this. This I feel like will be one that I will probably hold on to. Just like to be able to come back to it over time as well. My next current read is Competitive Grieving. Um, again, these little bookmarks in here, I'm right here, um, I'm only, I have the heart on the side where I'm actually at, so I'm on page 70 in here, so not very far. Um, this was a brand new buy for me. I wanted this since I heard it was coming out. I'm going through a lot of grief. I feel like that's pretty obvious. I've kind of like said that over and over. Um, just going through a lot of things. So uh, I feel like this is more of a lighthearted note of it versus like the body keeps the score, the Enneagram stuff, like therapy and all that stuff that I'm dealing with, this feels like a lighthearted fiction way of possibly understanding it from a different perspective. So we'll see how this goes. Again, I was really into this and then I started reading like the body keeps the score and stuff and those real life things I really do connect with more. Um, but I appreciate the lighthearted stuff when that stuff feels too heavy. So I'm excited to finish this as well. The next one that I'm actively reading was part of the book haul, which I already started, but it's Tiny Little Things Advice on Love and Life from Dear Sugar. Now, I know Dear Sugar was like a columnist. I thought it was in the newspaper, but I guess it was like an online thing. Again, right here, I'm not quite halfway through the book. Um, but I'm loving this. It's just a nice, like, it's basically articles that were published on online sources of people writing in letters to her, asking for advice on their situations. And her responses are exactly what you would expect them to be, but I think in a way it's just really nice to be hearing other people's struggles and it helps in that sense of community because I think we all want that. And... I've lost a lot of people in my life recently, um, not through death, but just relationships ending and moving apart. Um, and I feel like there were a lot of significant people in my life, so I'm kind of like grappling with, I feel alone and I need like my, I need a community again. Um, so I'm really working on that in my life. So this kind of book currently is really helping me with some of that in a way. I guess it just like is more lighthearted in that way. Um, it's not helping me really process anything, but it's helping me keep in like perspective that I need to put myself back out there to kind of rebuild, not rebuild. I think the relationships I have in my life currently are really good. I just would want to add some more um, for different parts, for different reasons. I just, all my friends are spread out all over the country um, and most of us don't connect very often. You know, life, we're in our 30s now. <laughs> uh, kids, like jobs, it's just difficult. So I just need to make more time to connect with friends, basically is what I'm trying to say. So this is just nice of a, like a reminder for like sense of community purposes, which is really helpful to me right now. So this is cute. 
Um, I can't wait to pass this on to someone else, and I think I know just who I will. So that's everything I'm currently reading, which is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven books that I'm currently <laughs> reading. For a while there, it was like one to two books max, but now I just... I, they all have different perfect times to be reading them at different times during the week for me, so it's working out pretty phenomenally. Um, apart from that, let's move into the next section where I go over the book haul, which two of them I've already showed you I got as part of the book haul and I'm already reading. Um, but yeah, let me jump into those. Change of seating spot. <laughs> now we're on the ground. Let's go over my little mini book haul. So most of these I don't know much about in the pile, um, but I'm still excited to read them. We might go over some synopsis. Come lay down. Come lay down. Hi. Why don't you lay down? Why don't you lay down and just take a little nappies? Hmm? <laughs> lay down. Okay. The very first one in the book haul is All of Again by Elizabeth Strout. I have heard of this author before, um, but I've never heard of this book before, so I'm excited to read this. I don't know much about it. Um, it says, prickly wry, resistant to change, yet ruthlessly honest and deeply empathetic. Olive Kittredge is a compelling life force. I won't read the whole thing, but I don't know. It says, the unforgettable Olive will continue to startle us, to move us, to inspire moments of transcendent grace. When I was out um, looking at book calls in a secondhand kind of situation, we're looking at book hauls, looking to buy books secondhand because I, the last ones I bought were, <laughs> let me just, my TBR pile is also right here. Um, I bought these ones over a year ago and I'm slowly working my way through them. So I think, I don't think I did a book haul on them before, um, but this is like my pile. I'm picking one from and then I'm obviously picking ones from the most recent book haul. Anyway, I digress. Most of the books that I've picked out were hardcover before this, um, and they were pretty thick. And so I really wanted to get some soft cover, like thin reads, all pretty much under 300 pages. Like this one's 270. So I think these will be easy reads. Um, yeah, I really don't know. It's a winner of a Pulitzer Prize. Not really much to know about it, but I'm excited to read it. The cover is kind of what hooked me on this one. My next one is um, All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Toes, I believe. Um, this one, the cover, sold me instantly. Again, I will hopefully not say this every time, but it's again part of the secondhand book haul. Um, it has quite a bit of water damage and stuff on the back, and the pages are discolored, but it doesn't seem to really, like, affect the readability. And this one's 320 pages. Um, but I loved the book, the look of the book, and then I read the back, and it really, like, mirrors something that I've had a really close friend of mine going through. Um, and they've been leaning on me for support, so I just wanted to read more about it, even though this is um, non-fiction. Oh, no, even though this is fiction, um, I think it would just be helpful to read about something, you know, just maybe to identify a little bit more with what my friend is going through. But it says, when Elf, a world-renowned concert pianist, attempts suicide just before an international tour, her sister Yali must keep their family from falling apart while facing a profound question. What do you do for a loved one who truly wants to die? The touching examination of loss of family of life itself is a story that is as much comedy as it is tragedy. A good a goodbye grin from a friend who taught you how to live. They, I asked them if it was fine if I mentioned, you know, kind of what they were going through in relation to this book. I told them I was going to be sitting down to do this. They had um, made an attempt on their life. They have children, they're going through a divorce, and they have recently come out as transitioning. So there's a lot of things there, um, and I'm trying to be as supportive and helpful as I can. Definitely listening, definitely trying to also just learn more about all of it and how to help support them the best. I possibly can. So this 
probably won't necessarily help with that, but I just think it would be good to read a story about something um, that I'm like semi helping someone else through, if that makes sense. So that's this one. This might be my next pickup, I think. Once I'm done with, I think seven books is a lot to be reading right now. This one I saw on the shelf actually while I was just at Barnes and Noble buying a gift for someone. Um, and it's Jennifer Egan's A Visit from the Goon Squad, and it won National Book Critics Circle Award. Um, but this one says, Benny is an aging former punk rocker and record executive. Sasha is the passionate, troubled young woman he employs. Here, Jennifer Egan brilliantly reveals their pasts along with their inner lives of a host of other characters whose paths intersect with theirs. With music pulsing on every page, A Visit from the Goon Squad is a startling, exhilarating novel of self-destruction and redemption. Which, this may not even be a surprise, which is what I said I'm going through in life in the first half of this, and what I mentioned in my first half of the books. I'll link that or card it somewhere. Um, but yeah, I, I want... I think it's like leaning into the discomfort, and there is something I find so soothing about that, even though a lot of times it I'm it forces me to process things not faster, just in different ways, which isn't a bad thing, but I'm really like attracted to just fiction or nonfiction. Um, hearing more stories just about other people's struggles. Like I'm 32, I'm gonna be 33 this year, and I, it, it kind of feels overwhelming and worrisome at the same time that like, I still am trying to figure out who the heck I even am and like what I like and how to not fall in the fawn fear response patterns of being like such an empathetic people pleaser so much so I don't care about myself um, and how much damage that's caused me through my life just with you know abusive relationships and just a lot of like toxic family and friend things and just life and I know everyone's going through this I know that I'm not alone in that at all um but it just really pushes me or I feel encouraged to just continue to learn like I am going through a lot of very difficult things this year um and it's been very hard for me um it's honestly been a really big struggle and we're almost to the end of June so it's been you know six months of this being sometimes several times a week of a topic that I'm having to process just with people and everything in my life um yeah so I have a lot of growing and learning to do um and a lot a lot of healing so I I'm probably going to talk about that personal stuff for a while. Um, and you know, side note, really quickly, I started putting videos on YouTube in 2014. And since then, talking out loud, which I only started because of therapy back then, was the first time I'd ever been to therapy. And I think it was late 2013, I think, or early 2014 was the first time I'd been to therapy. Um, and since then, I've just it's always been pouring out of me and so maybe it feels a little dramatic that I still feel like I've I've made so much progress but I still have so much to learn um but the fact that you know some stuff just keeps being repetitive cycles which shows me that I I need to change more things um or I need to learn something new or I need to continue to remove situations from my life but anyway I'm probably going to talk about that a lot because of just my history on YouTube, my history of being more open and honest about my feelings and my life throughout YouTube. And I've removed a lot of videos, but I have a lot on there that I don't necessarily align with anymore either. Um, but they were all parts of my journey. And I think sitting down and talking, getting it out, rewatching it gives me a different perspective. So I definitely want to continue that. I realize it makes me too much for a lot of people. Like I'm a lot for a lot of people and I respect that if a lot of people, I, I make them uncomfortable and that's not my intention. Um, but I'm just, I am very vocal <laughs> about what I'm going through. So anyway, I digress. 
I'm excited to read this. This feels like something I wouldn't normally pick up, but it was right next. All of these books were pretty much on like two shelves and they all just felt like the right books to grab that day. So I'm excited to see what this is, see where it goes. The next one I loved for the cover is Commonwealth by Anne, I don't know if it's Patchett or Pache. Um, I don't really know much about this. I do know that it's like a collection of stories, if I'm correct. Um, no, that's not this one. That's a different one. This one, I will just read the very bottom of the synopsis since it's like the whole page in here, but just a quick. Uh, total with equal measure of humor and heartbreak, Commonwealth is a meditation on inspiration, interpretation, and the ownership of stories. It is a brilliant and tender tale of the far-reaching ties of love and responsibility that bind us together. Which, like, yes, please, I will take that all day. So I'm excited to read this. I'm actually hoping I can get through most of this book haul pile before winter, because a lot of these really feel, except for all of Again, that feels like a fall book, but the rest of these feel like summer, so I want to get through them. This next one is The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diffenbaugh. Um, I have heard about this, and I was so excited to find this. I don't know specifically about the book much, but... I have a friend um, who is on the East Coast that runs a flower farm with her mom um, and she has taught me so much about flowers and like the fact that flowers can mean different things to someone who knows about them of course but that they somehow were the right thing to give to the right person at the right time if that makes sense. Um, so she's taught me a lot, I've asked a lot of questions, she's been so wonderful to just answer things and help me, um, and this goes even into like, if anyone knows who Rachel Metz is, um, again, if I remember I'll link her, she's a DIY channel, but she for a while on Instagram has had like the hashtag of buy yourself the damn flowers, um, which I've done for a while now, and knowing the meaning of flowers, it's like I'm buying them for myself in like a self-love romantic way I guess if that makes sense anyway let me read this because I think it's important um acacia for secret love daffodil for new beginnings wisteria for welcome and camellia for my destiny is in your hands in Victorian times the language of flowers was used to convey romantic expressions but for Victoria Jones, it's more useful in communicating mistrust and solitude. After a childhood spent in foster care system, she is unable to get close to anybody, and her only connection to the world is through flowers and their meanings. Now 18 and emancipated from the system with nowhere to go, Victoria realizes she has a gift for helping others through the flowers she chooses for them, which I just love. But an unexpected encounter with the mysterious stranger has her questioning what's been missing in her life, and when she's forced to confront a painful secret from her past, she must decide whether it's worth risking everything for a second chance at happiness. Which just like, does that not sound like a great book? And then I know back here, the very back, which I love this, it's Dictionary of Flowers. So I'm going to pull this up here, hopefully you could see. Through these pages, it just talks about the different flowers and like their meanings that they can have, which just love. I dream of being an old lady having a flower farm now because of what my friend's done, because of what she's taught me, because of the significance that flowers actually can have, because I want to buy everyone flowers and I love gifting them, and because they can have meaning. Love it, love it, love it. Cannot wait to read that. This next one is actually the collection of stories. So this is Birds of America by Lori Moore. Never heard of it. This is the only hardcover I bought. I almost put it back, um, but I read the synopsis, um, and it's a collection of different stories, um, but the very bottom of the synopsis says, in what me, <laughs> words, in what may be her most stunning book yet, Lori Moore explores the personal and the universal, the idiosyncratic and the mundane, with all the wit, brio, and verve, that have made her one of the best storytellers of all time. So I, like I said, my understanding is this a col is a collection of stories through people's lives. I don't know much about it, um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. So I'm hoping to read this maybe end of summer, early fall as well. A lot of these books, like I said, felt very summer. 
The next one I picked up is In the Woods by Tana French, um, and it won an Ed Edgar Allan Poe Award, and I... Psychological thrillers and just like horror, the horror genre is my like all-time favorite within honestly games and media like movies but I've never Not that I can recall like outside of like reading I've had to do for school I have never picked up a like psychological thriller a horror a mystery like creepy book and given it a shot and I don't know why um, so I grabbed this again part of the collection of everything that I got at the thrift store but This one says the debut novel of an astonishing new voice in psychological suspense in Tana French's powerful debut thriller Three children leave their small Dublin neighborhood to play in the surrounding woods Hours later their mother's calls go unanswered when police arrive They find only one of the children gripping a tree tr trunk in terror wearing blood-filled sneakers and unable to recall a single detail of the previous hours 20 years later detective Rob Ryan the found boy who has kept his past secret and his partner Cassie Because I'm full of myself. It has nothing to do with me <laughs> Cassie Madox investigate the murder of 12 year old girl in the same woods now with only snippets of long buried memories to guide him Ryan has the chance to uncover both the mystery and the case before him and that have his own shadowy past which this just sounds Great, like I said it won the um, Edgar Allan Poe award So I'm hoping this goes well, and then if it does maybe I can branch into horror and thriller and creepy books like that's a genre I've never touched since I was in high school which was a long time ago <laughs> so we'll see I have high hopes for that one this next and last book that I picked up um, as part of the book haul from the thrift store is moonwalking with Einstein the art and science of remembering everything and I'm sorry if I mentioned this in the last one for my first half of the books of the year um, it'll be three years ago this August that I was involved in a head-on collision. I got a TBI, um, se severe, like, post-concussion syndrome. Just a lot. I'd done over a year's worth of speech and cognitive therapy. Like, I have all these things that I've worked through to try to help maintain my memory. I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, I severely lack and struggle with short-term memory. Um, so I saw this and again, it was on the same shelf as these other books and it just felt like the right thing to pick up after I read the synopsis, so I will read it for you. It says, while researching an article on the USA Memory Championships, Joshua Four was equally dubious and intrigued by one contestant's claim that even an average memory like Four's, if used properly, could win the event. And after a year of memory training, he found himself in the finals of the same championship. Under the tutelage of mental athletes, F-O-E-R, so I think Foer, learns ancient techniques once employed by Cicero to memorize his speeches and medieval scholars to memorize entire books. Moonwalking with Einstein draws on cutting-edge research, a surprising history of memory, and vener venerable tricks of the mentalist trade to transform our understanding of remembering. Through his extraordinary odyssey, we acquire a profound appreciation of a gift we all possess that often slips our minds. So just based on my lack and like really big struggle with short-term memory, I'm excited to see if this helps, if this teaches me anything, if it helps me in any way. This will hopefully be when I report back on maybe by the end of the year I'll go over all my books. I'm not sure. Um, I've been on the fence. I filmed book videos before, um, but I I don't know. Maybe I'll push myself to do an end of the month reads to go over all the stuff. But we'll see. That is my last book from the book haul. But if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm excited to get back into some more content about just different things because I've done a lot here. And I'm going to continue to do a lot here. And there's a lot of exciting things coming. Um, but I have a lot of work to do. Just on myself and the future. Um, everything in the next year. Everything you kind of see around me. Everything in this basement. Because I'm in my basement. Um, we're going to be 
selling everything and changing our lives drastically. So <laughs> I will divulge into that more when I have more. I'm hoping to make a whole video on it. There's a lot to process. Um, I just have a lot going on in life, like I've continued to say. But otherwise, thanks for watching. And if you have any book suggestions or anything that you've read that I've shown and you want to give me a non-spoiler like review or just if there's something you're interested in. Honestly, if someone's interested in a book and I finish it, I'm happy to send it to um, someone that watches this. So that's something I'd like to keep open for the future. But I can ramble forever. I'm so good at doing that. We are going to end the video here. But be well, babes, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!